when God gave the nations the church he gave that nation the answer to their problems because God's kingdom is not just a spiritual place what you don't know is that God's kingdom is a country there's power in knowledge there's power in information there's power in knowing something if you know what has been written concerning health it is easy to claim healing if you know what has been written concerning finance it is easy to claim wealth if you know what has been written concerning business you, there are words in the scriptures that have you run to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abbott brings you God's word with deep insight and power. God bless you. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Something is about to break loose here. And then put it up fast. Acts 1, verse 8. I want to show you the end to struggle in destiny. It doesn't matter how many food stuff you have in your house. If there's no fire to cook it, you can't eat it. It doesn't matter how many talents you have inside. There are potentials inside of you. Great gift inside. If there's no fire to refine them, you won't be an answer to problems in this generation. Now, see what the Bible said here. Acts one twenty one. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Can I tell you, there are men in these last days who, when you write their biography, you will say they were living a pistols, they were living a pistols, they were men who walked in this world as gods. I want to show you the secret now. He said, after that the Holy Ghost has come on you. There is the Holy Ghost that comes into you. That's the one you receive as salvation. When you got born again and then you received Jesus. And maybe you were baptized with the Holy Ghost. It came inside of you. You started speaking in tongues. Part one. It can't get anything done outside. Only inside you. That one produces the fruit of the spirit. That's the one that is in charge of recreating the human spirit. Where you used to be a cheat before now, you are a faithful man. Where you used to be a liar before now, you are a truthful man. Where you used to be a sinner before now, you are a Christian. That's the one the Holy Ghost within does. The Holy Ghost within is for the believer. But the Holy Ghost upon is for the nations. The Holy Ghost upon is for your generation. The Holy Ghost upon is for other people. That's the one that brings answer to your generation. He said... And then you shall become my witness. You shall become witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in all Samaria and to the end of what? The end of the what? What is the secret for that? What is the secret for taking ministry to the nations? What is the secret for subduing campuses? What is the secret for subduing nations? What is the secret for subduing the whole continent of Africa? What is the secret for going into a country and breaking the iron gates in that city? In that city? What is the secret for taking a secondary school? Where they say cultism is taking over. Where they say prostitution is taking over. And then bringing God's power and God's glory in that atmosphere. And then you wipe out all the vices going on there. The secret is the infilling of the Holy Ghost. The most disadvantaged man in the world is not the one with potentials. It's not the one without gifts. It's the one without the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's the one who is the most disadvantaged. You are completely useless in the program of God without the Holy Ghost upon you. Can I show you? 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It's going to fall here right now. He said, now concerning spiritual gift do you know the holy ghost is actually the gift with the gifts when it comes there are people who are looking for gifts no you don't need to look for gifts get the gift the gift carries the gifts these signs shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast you don't need to look for signs just get the man in charge of the signs 
signs are not meant to be pursued signs are meant to pursue you is somebody hearing what i'm saying signs are meant to follow you says and follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out that means when you open this your mouth and talk devils should not be argued you look at cancer and say come on in the name of jesus get out this generation is full of all kinds of issues you are carrying answers yet you don't know it you look at ancestral causes and then you break it by the pronouncement of your words because of what you are carrying we have a generation that is so religious christians who are carrying bibles but the bible has not become alive in them they are carrying letters and letters have not become spirit and rema to them having a form of godliness the bible said and denying the power thereof he said from such turn away from these are not times to be in a methodological church these are not times to be in a kind of ministry where they have only teaching theory the gospel is the power the gospel is the power that means if i bring the gospel to a cultist there's something in the gospel that changes him it's the power the gospel is the power the gospel is the power the gospel has not lost the power the church of the end time lost the gospel that has the power we are preaching theories preaching equations turning our pulpit into seminar grounds and doing all kinds of stuff and the word is crying for answers can i show you you're going to see something right now he said now concerning spiritual gifts brethren i do not want you to be ignorant that means preach all your preaching profess all your christianity dress all you want to dress don't be ignorant about the holy ghost and his gifts this is one aspect you can't play with concerning these things i would rather that you're not ignorant he said you will know that you were gentiles that is you were sinners before you were in the other side of the world before he said carried away to these dumb idols dumb idols they have eyes they can't see they have legs they can't walk they have hands they can't do anything he said however you were led verse 3 therefore i make known to you that no one speaking by the spirit of god calls jesus a cost and no one can say that jesus is lord except 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 by the holy ghost you can't preach jesus without the holy ghost you can't win souls without the holy ghost you can't bring salvation to a community without the holy ghost you can't change people's lives without the holy ghost the reason we can't change lives is that we are trying to do it by our own power not by power not by might but by the spirit says the lord by the spirit the Bible says, do not be careful of what to say when you stand before men because God is going to give you utterance. All you just need to do is open your mouth. There's a source that flows power. When it comes upon you, you're no longer speaking from your own ideas. You're no longer speaking from your own theology. You're no longer speaking from your own story. You're speaking and discharging the cancel of heaven because through your generation. That's why you need to stay connected to the supply. Because the Holy Ghost knows the problem of this age more than you. He knows the message for the mess of this age. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? It's not manufacturing and concocting messages. Seven keys that are not opening any doors. People are hearing seven keys and they are decaying. Because we have lost the real key. Now this is it. It's a devil. Go to verse 4. This is where I want to take it. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. The same spirit carries diversity of gifts. I can decide to buy a bag of rice, put it in my house. On Monday, I cook jollof rice, the same rice. On Tuesday, I cook fried rice, the same rice. On Wednesday, I cook ofada rice, the same rice. On Thursday, I cook Chinese rice, the same rice. On Friday, I decide to cook a uh, uh, curry rice the same rice on saturday i decide to cook spanish rice the same rice on sunday i decide to cook chinese rice or cook coconut rice it's the same rice 
one spirit but carrying different gifts and then it's shocking a lot of people have been christians for years and they've not manifested one and i'm going to show you something they have been christian talking blowing tongues they don't understand they have not manifested one in their generation verse 5 he said there are differences of ministries so who is the man in charge of ministry the holy ghost that's why you call it ministry gifts hey differences in ministries there's somebody's ministry who is to the world of sports there's somebody's ministry that is to the world of girls there's somebody's ministry that is the world to the world of families there's somebody's ministry that is to the world of students another person's ministry is to the world of prostitutes another person's ministry is to the world of cultists different ministries but the same lord verse 6 sit down for a while if you can it's going to get hotter in a moment he said and there are diversities of activities hey, yeah, yeah. that means it's the same spirit but operating differently the same spirit different activity you see look at the body for instance this is one body with many parts these parts are different ministries it's the same body but it has ministry of hands. The ministry of hands has its own activity. It has ministry of leg. The ministry of leg has its own activity. So what's the ministry of hand? Ministry of hand is called ministry of hand. What's the activity of this ministry? To carry things. To hold things. To touch things. You have ministry of the legs. What's the activity of the ministry of the leg? To walk. What's the ministry of the head? To carry things, perhaps. What's the ministry of the eyes? To see. The activity of the eyes? To see. Okay, what's the activity of the ministry of the nose? To smell. But one body. Do you know how God designed the church just like the body is? God brings people and equips them with diverse ministries and activities. The Bible says it's for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry they now add it for the edification of the church the edification of the church that's the building up of the church god expects his church to build when everybody does his own part for instance look at this building where we are all in now this building is not all paint this is a building this building is not all wood this building is not all ties this building is not all blocks there are different parts and different people supplying their own skills and their own parts to ensure that this building is complete. For instance, there is somebody called a messing man. What's his job? The blocks. He mows the blocks and lay the blocks. But you can't say the messing man is the most important man in the building. Why? Because the messing man can't be the carpenter. If he finishes building and you pack it to the house and there's no roof, rain will fall and destroy all your appliances. You're sleeping the night and it rains. Rain is going to soak all your bodies. So you can't say, oh, the guy that does the block is the most important man. You now see why some people cannot fulfill their ministry. Because they are eyes some other person's ministry for getting their unique callings. They are looking at how that sister is doing it. And that's why envy and jealousy and rejection is everywhere in the church. Wounding a lot of testings because they are forgotten. Everyone is giving to his own ability. God equips all of us. All my body cannot be hands. There's a room my leg is playing. No matter how indispensable the hand said is, the hand can't play. It. There's a room my eyes is playing. No matter how the nose thick is, is important, it can't play the role of the eyes. There's a room my mouth is playing now. No matter how important my private organs seem to be, it cannot talk. So the messy man can say I'm the most important guy. If he understands how God builds the kingdom, he would support the carpenter guy. The carpenter guy would support the plumber guy. You see different things in this building. There's a restroom somewhere. Go there. All plumbing. There are plumbers everywhere. Pipes, all those uh, water systems and all of all that. It's not the job of a carpenter. It's the job of a plumber. 
There's another side of the job that is electrical. Look at now, we have light in this building. The blocks can't supply light. There's another thing responsible for the illumination of this environment. And then there's somebody who is specialized in ensuring that the light produces. So the electrician cannot be said, I'm more important than the block man. There's another one in charge of the doors, maybe aluminum. He's in charge of the fittings, the windows. You won't say, ah, that one is not important. There's another one in charge of POP. And the POP guy is different from the guy who did this, the messing job. There's another one in charge of painting. All of these things coming together to produce one building that is complete. Imagine you have a house and there are no doors. No matter how beautiful the architectural design is, that is a very juicy attraction for criminals. So you see the guy who fixes the door has an important role to play. That's why you cannot play around in the church because without you something will be missing in the kingdom and God will make you pay for it. You're going to pay dearly for it, my friend. You can't be saying it's pastor's job. It's this other person's job. It's that other one's job. Hey, they have their own job description. You also have your own. If you don't play, something is going to go wrong. As insignificant as this, your eyelids or eyelashes are, they are very important. They protect your eyes from dust. There are small, small hair in your nose. You do not recognize them, but if you know how important they are, they have been there for ages. They've not rebelled against your body. They have been inside your nose. They are only to sift dust. Insects can't get easily into your nostrils because they are dear. So before the insect even gets there, there is a signal. You cough it out. You sneeze it out. He said, and there are diversities of activities. But it is the same God who works all in all. So where is the fight coming from? It's the same God. My gift is comes from the same God. Your own comes from the same God. Why are we not cooperating? Why are we not uniting? Why are we not discharging and dispensing our giftings? Now look at the next verse 8. Quickly. For to one is giving the word of wisdom. You now see the sharing of the gift. There are about nine spiritual gifts actually. Nine. Some say it's seven but if you do a deep work, nine. Do you know? If I even read down you will see some of the things you don't know are gifts of the spirit are actually gifts of the spirit for instance administration there's some people who do not have the ability and the anointing to talk like i'm talking but they can organize they have ability to bring order they have ability to build systems they have ability to be good managers they have ability to be good accountants they, if they manage finance here for you even the pastor cannot do as good as they do it's a gift. You call it helps ministry. There's some people who may never ever preach with the mic like I'm preaching, but they can do well in driving. It's a ministry. And do you know the truth of the matter? Those ones who even find themselves in such offices are the ones that collect the real things. They're the ones that collect the real baptism at the end of the day. He said, for to one is giving the word of wisdom through the spirit. To another, the word of knowledge through the same spirit. Verse 9. To another, faith by the same spirit. I can't explain all this. To another, oh, you have to go back. I'm not done. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healings. It didn't say healing. Healings different healing of the soul healing of the mind there's healing of the intellect somebody here there's healing of broken hearts there's healing of that's what we paraphrased in Isaiah chapter 61 there's healing for bodily sick people there's healing for spiritual sick people that means you carry this gift of healings you can talk to a dead man and he's revived it is a gift of healing. There are diverse healings. So when you hear healing, don't think it's just for the body. Cancer, God healed. That's one healing. HIV, God healed. That's one healing.
Hepatitis, God healed. That's one healing. There is healing for the soul. Just like there's healing for the body. There's healing for the soul. There are people who are carrying wounds inside. Rejection. This same Holy Ghost. You don't need to read 48 laws of power to make impact. This same Holy Ghost. It can give you wisdom on how to take a broken life and fix it. That is without talking too much grammar. You just talk, power flows from that thing you'll say. And it fixes a broken life back. There's nothing like, let me go and find out which book deals with matters of the heart. The Holy Ghost deals with matters of the heart. So, don't be deceived when you see somebody flowing. All the things you see will flow in is the same gift, the same person, gift of the Holy Ghost. You see him teaching, is the Holy Ghost. This one doesn't have power. He has power. That teaching thing he's doing is from the Holy Ghost. You see him doing administration, is the Holy Ghost too. You don't know it's the Holy Ghost that gives people even entrepreneurship skills. Oh, here, put Exodus. You come back to this one. Can I show them that account of Bezalel? Put Exodus. Exodus chapter 32, right? Hey. Find it and put it. Is that Exodus chapter 30 or 32? 38. Exodus 38, verse what? What again? Verse what? 1. So you see a person who is struggling to create wealth, struggling to make ends meet, struggling to be a whatever. It, what the person needs on his life is the endowment of the spirit. Okay, it, that's not one. It's not verse one. Go down, find it for me quickly, and then get back to Ephes- to First Corinthians. It's in Exodus. Find it, or you should have proper thirty-eight verse one, thirty-one verse one. Put it up. Exodus 31 verse 1. Let me show you that this spirit is multi-gifted. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, now this is God speaking to a pastor, a leader, a deliverer. But now the deliverer cannot do everything. And then he wants to show him something he has been neglecting. You've been limiting the Holy Ghost thinking that it's only for forward and an order. No, he's beyond that. The Bible said that there was a spirit found in Daniel and it's called the spirit of what? excellence spirit of excellence the bible says there's a spirit a man and the inspiration of the almighty give it him what understanding oh so even the holy ghost gives understanding the holy ghost is the one in charge of excellence for instance you see my multi-excellence life how i'm so organized so detailed so full of administration so full of talent and skills i'm able to write songs i'm able to develop new lyrics all of all those things i do my ability to play on the keyboard and play on a few instruments all of all those things my ability to sing my ability to set church in order put one or two things in place address things the way they should be even when i said cheers here you wonder is he a machine setting it or a human being it is the holy ghost i carry it's not a it's not a nature it's the holy ghost you can change your nature by carrying him. They say you are a lazy person. Carry him. You cannot be lazy. You'll be productive. They say you are not excellent minded. You are a mediocre. You can't carry the Holy Ghost and be a mediocre. He's the most excellent being. He's the one that created everything you see. There was no creation until God adopted him. There was no creation until God partnered with him. He is so important that God can't do without him. He's so important that Jesus couldn't do without him. He's so important that Jesus sent him to the church because that is all the church needs to break boundaries and do exploits. I don't think you're getting what I'm saying. I said before the creation began, before God created the heaven and the earth, the Bible said in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And then the earth was without form and void. And darkness covered the face of the deep. And then the spirit of God was hovering on the surface of the earth, on the surface of the waters. Then God begs the Holy Ghost and said, can't you see that there is nothing in this world? It is formless. It is full of void. It is empty. Please, can I lend your support? I want us to create this world and the Holy Ghost entered God. And then God illuminated with light and began to create a dark world and formed the mountains, formed the everything you see, the trees, the shrubs, everything you can see created by God, by the instrumentality of the Holy Ghost. I don't know who I'm talking to here, but there's somebody listening to the sound of my voice who has allowed the Holy Ghost over the around his compound, over the around the church. The Holy Ghost comes for service and he's just hovering. Instead of collecting him upon your life, 
as powerful as God is. God needed him to create. When I see broke, poor Christians who are not innovative, who are not creative, I say, with all these Holy Ghost available, very so full of supply everywhere. He is everywhere. It's just people who are not going for him. He's everywhere. It's people who are not waiting on him. Those that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with new wings as eagles. They shall run. You know that kind of run that when you are running it is, you know it's not you who is running it. In the Bible says, it is the Spirit of God that walketh in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. That means you can do nothing without him. It's the Holy Ghost. Lift up your voice in one minute. Just pray in other tongues. Yes. Yes. This you couldn't do by your power. The Holy Ghost is coming. It's going to come on you tonight. Christianity, no more dry Christianity, no more resultless Christianity, no more weak Christianity. There's power for exploits, power to break boundaries, power to take nations, power to heal the sick, power to raise the dead. That power is available. The power of God. Fire shut up in my bones. The world cannot wait for my manifestation. They can't wait any longer. They have waited enough. The Holy Ghost is upon me. He's anointed me to do wonders, to break the chains and the yoke of Satan upon lives. I have the power of God to do much more than I think I can do. Concentrate a little. I need to wrap up this quickly. Some of you from today, your eye is going to change. Fire will literally start burning. When people look at your eyes, they will see fire. Fire, fire. It's literal. I mean, literal fire from the Holy Ghost. Too dangerous to be cold. Too dangerous to be sick. Too dangerous to be complacent. Too dangerous to be normal. You are a kingdom producer. You are not a normal person. You are a generational earthquake. What is to happen to this age? I don't care what people say you are. I don't care how they conclude that you. I don't care what they say your weakness is. When the Holy Ghost comes on your life, it shatters the yoke on your life and releases the answer you are carrying to your generation. Backs. No more sitting down. Fire is shut up in your bones. Fire is shutting up in your bones. 
fire is shutting up your bones. Fire is shutting up your bones. Fire is shutting up your bones. No more addiction. No more addiction. No more rejection. Whatever held you back is getting out of your life because God is set to do something. Fire in this house. Fire everywhere. Yeah, fire everywhere. There's fire. There's fire. There's fire in this house. There's fire here. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. I want you to help the people who are on that, you know, just help them. Just help them. I need to show you one more thing while you're standing because we're about to pray and then close. Gifts are about to manifest in this house. Some of you have input anointing for healings, but you are carrying it and sitting down. It's time to go in faith and touch the cripples and they will stand up and begin to walk. You're carrying deadly anointings. Let fear not kill you. Rejection. Let it not kill you. You are the answer this age is waiting for. Some of you here, the whole city of America, New York will come on their news because of you. The answer the world is waiting for is coming from Africa. Nigeria is a trigger point. Amen. Amen. Be still. Be still. Be still. Be still. Be still. Be still. Get me back to the Exodus. Be still. I want to show you something. And there's going to be another manifestation of God's spirit here. We need to take the church on this journey. Get me the last weekend, my friend. The guy on the pre- the last weekend of November, second week, last weekend of November, we are doing Holy Ghost Congress for the entire church. All the churches of this ministry. This is 
is the only way ministry can extend beyond where it is now. See what it says concerning Bezalel. He says, see, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hor, of the tribe of Judah. Go down quickly, please. He said, and I have filled him with the spirit of God. Hey, Anita Prino. Hey, 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 let me show you. He said, I filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship. Somebody who is just a businessman. So that means there is, you used to think the Holy Ghost was for pastors. Now you can build a company with him. You can, the Holy Ghost, you, you can build a big business from scratch and take it to a multinational corporation. He said he's filled with the Holy Ghost. He said to design artistic works. Some of you woke up and just found that you have natural ability to draw. You have natural ability to do artwork. Where do, where do you think you got it from? He said in work in gold. To work in gold. In silver. In bronze. Verse 5. In cutting jewels. For setting. Hey! So even decoration needs Holy Ghost. Events manager. You need the Holy Ghost to do your event setting. To plan wedding for people. To decorate venue for wedding. To plan and manage an event. To do all three for event. He said for what? For cutting trails, for setting. In carving wood. A capital needs it also. Hey, in carving wood, hey, you carry the Holy Ghost, you will create all kinds of things with this same wood. You can create a human being with wood. You can build a house from foundation to roofing, all with wood. Go to China and see what they're doing. Turkey, and some of this part of the world, see the amazing things people are doing now. And I say, from where? Satan has nothing to give, my friend. Everything is promising people is something he's copying. Everything is promising me something is stealing somewhere. Verse 6. And I indeed, and I indeed, I have appointed him with Aholia, the son of Ahishamak, of the tribe of Dan. And I have put wisdom in the hearts of all the gifted artisans. Artisan. You know who an artisan is? A workman. He said, all the gifted artisans that they may make all that I have commanded you. That means there are people here who will manifest God's spirit in entrepreneurship. Wisdom to create wealth. Do you know it's a gift? The Holy Ghost gives wisdom. You can create wealth with it. You can have entrepreneurship ability. You create amazing wealth for the kingdom. Can I round up? Go back to my scripture. First Corinthians chapter 12. I want to close it there. I mean, this one happening to you is original. You don't need copy and paste. You carry the Holy Ghost. Hey, you produce mind-boggling things in your generation. Can I get back my first Corinthians chapter 12? Okay. He said, but the manifestation, that's verse 7, the manifestation of the Spirit is given are you sure I'm at seven? Is he seven I was? Go back to six. He said, and all that, okay, okay. Go to seven now. Yes, I've read that. He said, but the manifestation of the gift of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Wow. So you carry your ability to interpret tongues and sit on it. There are people who won't profit. I just spoke tongues now. That could be somebody's message. Where is the interpreter? You need the gift of interpretation of tongues in the church 
So that could be somebody's message. It could be that I just said, the governor is waiting for you tomorrow morning. There's somebody who he, he, he is looking for somebody who can do decoration and the decorator is in the house. He's looking for somebody who can do decoration for you and he will pay him 10 million. He has looked all around, nobody. But it's you, it's, if he sees your face, he knows you're the one he's waiting for. And then because I just spoke, nobody with a gift to interpret, the message is lost. And then we are complaining, why is there no breakthrough? Channels can be broadcasting news. As long as you don't have subscription, you won't collect the news in your house. The Holy Ghost is your subscription to heaven's broadcast. The gifts you carry, that's what connects you. You know what heaven is saying part time. He said, for to one is giving the word of wisdom through the same spirit to another, the word of knowledge. Can you see that? Through the same spirit, verse 9, to another, hey, Oh, they cannot. Hurry up, please. That shouldn't be happening here. That's demonic. Satan is always trying to find a way to interrupt. That shouldn't be happening here. Take that back or whatever outside. Quickly. To another faith by the same spirit. To another gifts of healings by the same spirit. To another, verse 10. The working of miracles. Eh? There's healings. There's miracles. Working of miracles. Miracles. Blind eyes open. They will open. Deaf ears open. Is anybody sick with any kind of sickness here? Any sickness. I'm not talking about malaria or headache. But that is also part of it. I'm talking about practical sickness. Maybe you had diagnosed of something. It could be a lump, cancer, whatever kind of sickness anybody sick with that kind of sickness maybe whatever it, i don't know what it is you will come here and tell me what it is that is happening to you now you go and check it's gone i know when to get into this thing once the thing the tempo comes once the time i know when the thing finds and then you can lift up your hands come and stand here just lift up your hands god's power is going to hit you right here is going to try any virus. Any other person here sick? You see, that's what the miracle working power of God is the advertisement of the gospel. If you miss the miraculous, then you have missed your advert. That's your promo. The miraculous is the promo of the church. Make it a habit to invite people who have physical disability to church. They need to be healed so like blind batimos they will go back and tell people see i was once blind now i can see then they will come to come and see what is going on here go to schools when you finish talking ask the student is anybody here who reads and don't understand come out here right now it's the same spirit that gives understanding is anybody here whose mother is sick word of knowledge can come say, as i'm talking now i perceive there's somebody here your mother is sick she's admitted in the hospital who is that person they see up he say, hey really he said, come, come, come. I'm going to lay hands on you. There's no distance or barrier in the realm of the spirit. He said, what is the problem? Is it cancer? Why is it? Yes, it's cancer. In the name of Jesus, as I lay hands on you, let him report on your mother's health. Get healed right now in the name of Jesus. And the you report, when you go home, go and check your mom, you'll find that she's already healed. The boy goes back home. The girl goes back home. Mommy, one auntie came to our school today. One uncle came to our school. He gave a word of knowledge. I don't know how he knew. See, you were sick. And then he prayed. What is happening? You see, I don't know. I ran so and so time. I just saw sweat coming out of my body. He said, Mommy, that was the same time he prayed, though. He said, Are you okay now? He said, I'm He said, Is that auntie who came to our school? He said, Which auntie is that? Do you think that man will not come looking for you? I say, If you carry answer, church growth is not a hard thing. It's power. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? It's power. All these things we are talking about are available. They are not feeble. They are already given. They are supplied in abundant supply. Lift up your hands. I rebuke hepatitis right now. I rebuke that contaminated blood. I rebuke whatever disease is in your body. The Bible says by the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. Right now, I cash out on the check of what Jesus has done. I place a demand for your total healing right now. I flush that bad blood 
completely tonight and i release the blood of jesus to flow right now from your veins to your arteries and every part of your body hey says whatever the infirmity is right now receive your healing <laughs> we are living in the era of creative miracles walk into hospitals and make a show of the devil this disgrace the idiot i wish there are people with cripple issues yet this is see the oh god can you see there's too much of supply of rain but where are the buckets we need to, to collect some of this thing and so once in a while we should take this thing to stadiums take it outside the field and then i end it this way to another prophecy to another discerning of spirit you can look at people and study them Go and check, do your test again, and you come back and testify. It's already gone. I need the result of the old test you did, and then next week, do another test. The result will be different. You come here and give the testimony, you will see. It. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. He said, but one and the same spirit works all these things. Distributing to each one individually as he wills. You know what that means? The more hunger you have, the more you withdraw. The more appetite you have. There is no limitation. Any height you are currently operating in is what you choose to operate in. You are your greatest limitation. The Holy Ghost is not limited. You limit him. How much price are you willing to pay to cash out on this? One more time, we're going to pray in the Holy Ghost. And then, some of you, as you're praying, you'll feel fire. Just for another one minute, fire will come. And then there are going to be the supplies of gifts. Holy Ghost, right now, I decree, move in this place. Let there be supply of gifts. Let the healing anointing come on some. Let the anointing for working of miracles come on some. Let the anointing for raising the dead come on some. Let prophetic gifts rest on them. Let the gift of healings rest on them. Prophetic gifts rest on them. interpretation of tongue rest on them if you can't pray the holy ghost come to the altar let me feel you right now you can't pray the holy ghost you can't speak in tongues come and meet me here but if you can pray the holy ghost lift up your voice and pray go ahead everywhere you are hunger for it hunger for it lift up your hands and just go ahead it's going to come on you desire it turn on the engine turn on the engine steam your engine steam your engine you're about to take off you're about to fly steam the aircraft steam the aircraft you're about to soar on eagle's wings steam the aircraft steam the aircraft entombment of power entombment of power pastor chino come and lay us a few in the holy ghost and let me hear her speak
we can no longer allow the video disciple the campuses it's time to go and quit the campus quit the schools no more amen tonight as i release you to go back home get a pen and paper and draft out your personal what personal input you're going to make it again of this season hear this this is a season to do ministry you see all these things you have received tonight in this meeting and what you're receiving in this weekend since yesterday till now look at the wealth of god's glory in this meeting the grace the supply of the anointing all the things going on here you can't go and sit on them you can't go and sit down in your house and go and say okay women convention is over nothing else no you want to sustain this fire put it to use have you wondered why some people who were christians for 30 years 20 years at the end of the day nothing to show for it because revival is meant for reformation revival comes so you can do work revival does not come for you to sit on it revival comes to steer you and push you into the field revival is not meant to get you to speak with just new tongues revival is not meant to just make you born again and make you rededicated and holy no revival comes to steer the giftings in you and then send you into the field as an answer to your generation don't stay in the church and backslide inside the church your christianity is not for you alone extend it to your generation no more drawbacks no more fears no more timidity no more inferiority complex you are now losing hey i say woman you are now loose that means you can now go out you can stand free and stand straight now no hunchback anymore don't consider yourself too small you ain't any sweaty for you my friend don't consider yourself too small go there and explode god has packaged an answer for that territory that's how you should see yourself you're not just one person living and just waiting to die and go to heaven you are an answer let it be said after your lifetime that an epistle once lived not a human being a walking epistle your, your life should be a biography of the acts of god and the move of god not he was born to the family and so and so he got married to so and so and then did education here and there and then finished and then got children to so and so and then died and that's all they can say about you no let it be written that you are a working god that you are an answer to you are an answer to this generation to your generation let it be written that in your lifetime you are a contributor you brought healing to societies not just individuals you brought healing to schools let it be written that you came to a school and the foundation of that school quaked and cultism died prostitution died let it be written let the history of schools not be written without mentioning what you did there that's the kind of human being you should be from henceforth somebody was preaching and mentioned preschool secondary school who is gonna who's gonna go and reclaim that school all those small small boys go to police station and see small small boys feeling it call this it students there's some pictures already show you tonight but there's no time again i'll leave it for tomorrow small boys need to call this him raping the bible says wherever the soles of your feet trace upon he has given it to you this your feet is an anointed one it just enters the campus it's yours Cultism can operate when you are here. You enter a secondary school, people can explain why they are crying when you talk. People can explain the effect going on in their body when you talk. It's the Holy Ghost at work in you. These are times to go back and spend time again with the Bible, with the Word. Read the Scriptures. Study to show yourself approved. The Holy Ghost can only operate with you as far as you know. The Bible says that he is going to bring to remembrance the thing you have learned. He doesn't remind you of anything you do not know. He only operates with what you know. So go back to your Bible and then stay with the word. I said divorce scriptures. 
read the Bible voraciously. When you're preaching, let scriptures be playing with scriptures every now and then. Be a Bible encyclopedia. Be a walking Bible. Shut down on some of the things you think you've nobody your mind to. Entertainment, comedy, jokes, and all that. No, it's time to open your heart now to the world. Tune to the frequency of the Spirit. Get devoted to worship. Get committed to prayers. Not just when you come to church, you now shake and go home and sleep like a lot of wood. No, in your personal closet, determine that you're going to pray. Every day, give God a minimum of one hour prayer. Minimum. Make it a deal. The devil gets scared of people who pray. You are a terror to the kingdom of darkness when you are a prayer based person. Tell me what is going to happen with your life from this meeting. After this meeting, what next? Go back and write it down. Next year's women's convention, we will be looking for a hall of 5,000 sitters to jam the place. When we come back for next year's women's convention, let the story be that, hey, the effect of that meeting left us completely transformed. Let the testimony be the result of the next year's women's convention. No more excuses. All your too much of excess traveling and jumping around. Cut down on all those stuff and spend time with God. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to be talking to you about the root generation. I will show you the character and the characteristics that makes you a root. And I'll link it up with Esther and a few other people. And then we'll wrap up the meeting from there. If it's your first time hitting this house, you have just hit with destiny. If you don't know that. You need to have eyes to recognize when you have met the man carrying your answer. When you have met destiny, you need to have that eyes. What God has given this generation here is very scarce. It's very scarce. It's a lot of times to get lost in a religion. It's a lot of times to get committed to something that is helping your destiny evolve. You are not called to church to be a sitter. You are called to be sent as an answer to your generation. If God brought you here, it is not by accident, it's by design. I see people who will walk and their shadows will heal the sick. I see people who would go to pregnant women and they say the baby is upside down. The old lady has it to come back. To them. Hey. This generation is yet to see the strangest act of the move of God strangest act. I mean very strange. Strange move. Very strange. Shocking move. That will leave shivers on people's body. The strangest move of God. People who will not need to pray for the blind to see. They will just come to a blind man and just look into the eyes. The guy's eyes will open. They don't need to pray for deaf ears to open. They will just come to the deaf ears and say, Hello sir, how are you? He will start, he will start to hear it. They don't need to pray before a dumb man starts speaking. They will just come to a dumb man and say, What is your name? He will answer. Hey, can I tell you? After this meeting, go into hospitals and then begin to heal those sick people. Start, enter your compound and be a madman. Start asking, are there sick people to heal here? Are there people with HIV? I want to heal. Who is with HIV in this compound? Are there people with cancer here? Don't be scared. You are carrying this thing already. Every one of you are carrying it already. It's on you already. They say that Hosa was in his building eating and then somebody was 
doing something in another building from a story building fell down and broke his skull into pieces and died instantly the whole skull and brain was outside like this and they heard about it people came and they were packing the man's corpse Archbishop in the house just came there and said, For what reason? He went to where the guy was and gathered the whole skull with the brain on the ground and put it in his hand and said, In the name of Jesus, take form right now. He said, God, you made a formless word take form. You created this thing. So, right now, I breathe right now. Do you know about Ezekiel? Son of man, shall these bones lead again? Have you heard about that man? Go and stay on the Bible and clothe yourself with mantles. Of the spirit of just men make perfect. Stay on God's generals. Stay on the book of Acts. Stay on those epistles. Stay on the gospels. Stay on those Old Testament scriptures. Those scriptures, Isaiah, Ezekiel. And clothe yourself. Stay on those books written by those Elijah. And the story of Elijah and Elisha. Stay on them and see the acts of God. It's possible even in this age even more possible. God wants to do much more. A dead guy whose skull was broken formed and came back to him. Dried bones who were dried, bodies decomposed, begin, began to assemble. Where did the new bodies come from? You don't know what you're carrying. No, you know that you are God's. Sons of the Most High. We are going to go now. Tomorrow we'll be here at 7 a.m. And then I want to encourage you, all of you, bring people as you come tomorrow. It's going to be a galore of miracles in the service tomorrow. I don't care what you're going through, whatever you're passing through. I don't care the, 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 the hindrances and the roadblock. Tomorrow I'm going to be breaking yokes here. I'm going to be breaking the yoke of poverty, the yoke of lack. I'm going to be breaking all kinds of satanic, you know, Tomorrow is going to be the blessing. I'm going to bring the blessing of a father on your life. I'm going to bring the blessing of fatherhood. The patriarchal blessing in this place. Get ready. Your life is about to switch. <laughs> you know the bottom part is the sweetest part of the food. That's where all the ingredients go and settle. Tomorrow is the bottom part. Take up a worthy thanksgiving offering. Not just a normal. A good one. Just to thank God for what he has done tonight. Just take it up as we bless him. Thank you, Father, for the offering in our hands. Thank you. Just find your bag and know everywhere it's scattered now. It's okay. We believe you've been transformed by the wonders of God's Word. For additional information about us, you can visit our website at www.princetonhills.org. You can also send us a mail at info at princetonhills.org or call 0806 499 Five zero two nine zero eight one two five double one three two one four. Princeton Hills Ministries raising global, global leaders. Global leaders.